Hey guys, so we all know that battery electric vehicles or EVs for short or BEVs are greener than vehicles powered by ice or internal combustion engines. That's the message that everyone from politicians to car manufacturers is giving us, right? No contest, at a street level, an EV is cleaner because it literally doesn't have an exhaust pipe pumping out noxious gases into the air. And that's important in cities and other densely populated areas where air quality is the real issue. That's facts. But bigger picture, are EVs any better for the environment as a whole than an ICE car? Not necessarily. In fact, in some ways, electric cars might actually be worse on a like-for-like -like comparison. Now, I realize that I'm walking into a bit of a minefield here and people have some very passionately held views on this topic. Some people think that traditional car manufacturers and the oil industry have a real interest in doing electric cars down to protect the money, protect the bag. If you look back, there's all kinds of murky conspiracy theories about big car makers killing off certain EVs decades ago because they saw them as a threat to the petrol powered status quo. But it works both ways. On the other side, you've got your EV evangelists who make out that buying a car with batteries basically qualifies you as a fully paid up tree hugger. Shock news though, it's not that simple on either way. Here's the deal. There was a report recently from a well-known manufacturer suggesting that like for like, an EV needs to travel as much as 90,000 miles before it even becomes as green as an ICE car. So if you have the choice between an electric car and a petrol car, then the moment you buy the electric one, you've already polluted the earth with tons of CO2. The petrol one will obviously emit more CO2 once you start to drive it, but it takes up to 90,000 miles of driving before the total CO2 output from the electric car matches that of the ICE car. Sounds outrageous. You're probably wondering which evil oil-funded megacorp has published this apparently anti-EV propaganda. I'll tell you, it's Volvo. Probably the most woke, environmentally engaged, right-on car company on the planet. Now, I'm not sure why they've done it, but it is useful. What's interesting is that it's not usually possible to make a direct comparison between EV and ICE. It's not like you can just compare, say, a Tesla Model 3 against the Ford Focus, because even if the respective companies were willing to share that information, the variables in the manufacturing processes and supply chains and all the rest of it would make it basically meaningless. But Volvo are different. Their ICE XC40 is built in exactly the same Belgian factory as the hybrid and electric versions. And the XC40 shares a platform with the XC40 Recharge. That means they're assembled on the same production line. They use the same suppliers, the same raw materials, the same processes, and the same people put them all together. This means an exact like-for-like -like comparison, which is great for us, but the results are quite honestly a bit shocking. Pardon the pun. For starters, the carbon footprint of building an all-electric XC40 recharge compared to one with a petrol engine is around 60% bigger before either of them have even turned a wheel on the road. And most of that is accounted for by the production of the battery. Over the course of their lifetimes, both cars will increase their CO2 footprints with every mile they cover because you need to generate the electricity to charge the EV and that creates CO2 and petrol creates CO2 every time you start the thing up. But depending on the source of the electricity, the recharge's footprint increases very gradually, while the ICE one starts lower, but climbs more steeply and then keeps on going. And at some point, the EV breaks even compared with the ICE one when the lines cross. The electric XC40 then finally starts to look greener. Still with me at the back? Good, right, I'll carry on. When that break-even point comes during the 124,000 mile usage phase that Volvo has chosen for the study is the crux of the argument. For the electric car, Volvo offers three different figures according to different mixes of energy supply. And the worst case break-even point using a so-called global split of fossil fuels and renewables is 90,000 miles. Based on the European energy split, we have more green energy in Europe, it seems. It's 52,000 miles. And if meanwhile, you've got a wind turbine at home and loads of you know, solar panels on your roof and you can drive the XC40 purely on renewables, then it pays back that CO2 penalty much earlier, 29,000 miles. Truth be told, the middle figure is probably the most realistic for us right now. And 
Over that 124,000 mile lifespan, it means the electric XC40 recharges overall CO2 footprint, including production, is 45 tons against 58 tons for the ICE car. So it's better, just not as better as some people might think. Now, to be fair, Volvo seems to have factored in everything here from the CO2 cost of mining the raw materials to make the batteries for the electric car on one side to the extraction and refining and shipping of the petrol, the welter tank figure on the other side. Check out the PDF of the report, which breaks down the, all the details of how they come to these figures in the description below. Obviously, not everyone agrees with Volvo's numbers. Now, there are people out there who say the fuel consumption and emissions figures that Volvo have used for the petrol car are biased to make it look greener and that the break-even point actually comes a lot sooner. They say that if you use different methods for measuring the mileage, EPA, which they use in America, versus WLTP, which we use in Europe, then the break-even point comes a lot sooner because EPA predicts worse mileage. All I'll say is that for better or worse, it looks like as close to being a like-for-like -like comparison as we're ever gonna see. So, does it mean ICE fans can point to EV fans and say, told you you're not that green? Yes, it does, yep. Does it also mean that electric car fans can look at petrol cars and say, you see, over time, your car keeps polluting more, but mine only gets better? Well, also, yeah. Everybody can claim the moral high ground on this one. What I wanna know is, What's Volvo saying and why are they saying it? Don't they wanna sell more electric cars? Like where's the logic in saying that ICE cars aren't as bad as we'd thought and that EVs aren't as green as we'd hoped? Maybe they just wanna have an open conversation, I don't know. And I guess we should have an open conversation because it's silly to think that electric cars are a magic bullet that can solve all our problems. They're just one step on a long journey. Here's the thing, it might look bad for EVs, but I still think they'll win out in the end, and here's why. Environmentally, and I'm only talking about emissions here, they're just better. If you live in a city and drive short journeys, then your break-even point might take longer to reach, but the air quality around your village or town will improve. But if you live out in the sticks and you do longer journeys, then you will reach that break-even point a lot quicker and ultimately the car will be a lot greener. The other issue is that car makers, Volvo included, can use this knowledge to put more pressure on their suppliers. They need to make the battery production companies, for example, use sustainable methods in the production of all their parts. So EVs have less of a CO2 burden at the start and that break-even point comes even sooner. The other thing is that we can reach the break-even point even quicker if we clean up the energy mix. Over the five to 10 years it might take an EV to reach that point, the grid should become cleaner. You could do what I do and just only use a renewable energy tariff. All my electricity is green, so my break-even point would be closer to 26,000 miles according to Volvo's methodology. The other thing we could do is just get more efficient with the types of EVs that we build. Right now, in order to get bigger range, lots of cars seem to just be using bigger, heavier batteries. And big, heavy batteries tend to have a bigger CO2 cost, not only to produce, but to charge and run. If we can make smaller batteries go further by building smaller, lighter, more efficient cars, then that helps as well. It's okay for electric cars to not be perfect at the moment. What's important is that we identify the areas that can be improved and make those improvements. Not all of it can be done overnight, but it can be done. And there's more potential to make EVs greener than there is to make ICE cars greener. We're kind of at the limit with how far we can take ICE cars in terms of their emissions. Right, conclusions. Well, I think hats off to Volvo for doing the study and sharing it and helping to drive the debate and the conversation. If nothing else, it proves that we need to be more honest with ourselves about the environmental impact of all cars, whether it be at a local level or on a global level. And the more informed we are, the better choices we can make for ourselves and for the planet. I know it's heavy, it's heavy stuff, but I'm interested in all this and I hope that you guys are as well. So don't forget, drive safe. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below, and as always, I'll see you on the next one. Peace.